What's up guys? Hey, Jared Beckstrand here, Doctor of Physical Therapy, ToneandTitan.com, and these are the five most common questions that I get asked about diastasis recti and postpartum abdominal rehab. I've even got a special guest with me on this one. It's going to be a lot of fun. Let's get into it right now. All right, everybody. Hey, what's going on? Special video today. I have got a special guest star with me. You guys know my wife, Camille. She's been in on a few of my other videos. Um, it's a lot easier to talk about diastasis recti with someone who's actually been through diastasis recti. Yeah. While I have had my fair share of experience with patients and even with my wife, um, <laughs> you know, the truth is I've never had it before. Your and so, and so, so. <laughs> and so it's always good to, to bring her in. And, and I thought it'd be fun to kind of bring her in on this video and see if we can help you guys out. You guys, the more I talk about this, the more questions that I get about it. I've got totally. quite a few videos here on YouTube about diastasis recti and uh, you guys' comments are really awesome. I appreciate all the comments that you leave in that video or in those videos rather than responding to each one individually. I thought it'd be easier if I just jump on here and shoot a quick video all about the five most common questions that I get as a physical therapist, as a postpartum specialist about diastasis recti. So that's right. what this video is. Let's get Take into it. Take it away. <laughs> so these questions I feel like are ones that I had Absolutely. as well. Um, I As we started the program, like I, a lot of these popped up for me too. Yeah, so yeah, absolutely. Women, you're not alone. You guys aren't alone for sure. These are really common questions. <laughs> okay, so the first one. I've heard of diastasis recti or mm -hmm. abdominal separation, but I don't think I have it. Is it really that common? And 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 that's that's a great question that I get all the time. Is is yeah. people will say, you know, yeah, I've heard of it, but that's that's one of those things that just doesn't really doesn't happen, happen to me. Much. Yeah, it doesn't happen to me. <laughs> you guys, the truth of the matter is, this is a this is a thing that happens in one hundred percent of pregnancies. If you made it to your third trimester, you had some degree of abdominal separation. Now, right. it might have just been stretched. There might be some minor tearing, or even with subsequent pregnancies, it can actually get. A lot worse yeah. and so really diastasis recti or abdominal separation happens 100% in 100% of pregnancies um, some of the research that I've read on this they looked at a six-week follow-up and it was still there in about 66% of women so yeah. two in every three women still have this at six weeks and then and it's even, not something that they check for it's, it's, it's really it's really not it's really yeah. not it's, it's your OB doesn't check for it so you don't know it's funny to ask that question sometimes I'll throw that out there like in social communities or whatever and yeah. just say hey who has been checked for this and like it just Nobody. doesn't happen it's not something your OBs are checking for so or the, midwife so the interesting part is that a one-year follow-up it's still there in one-third of women so at about 30 percent at a one-year follow-up still have some degree of this abdominal separation so really moms one in three of you very well you got very it. likely has this <laughs> and so it is a fairly common problem um luckily there's a lot that that we can do about it yep learned that too okay <laughs> question number two if I just work my abs really hard after pregnancy, I will be able, I should be able to tone my stomach, right? Yeah. So you guys, this one, this one kills me. And especially like, I did this. You, I did you're this. living proof. Yes. I go, I go into the gym and like, I'll see, you know, moms in there and they, they just work so hard yeah. on their sit-ups and their crunches, their planks, their mountain climbers, like name an ab exercise and you guys kill it. You like, like you work hard. <laughs> so hard. You are so guilty of this, yes. like working just incredibly hard on it. But the thing is, you guys, postpartum fitness and postpartum abdominal workouts don't look the same as they did before you had babies. We need to make this mentality shift of, you know, tone my abs to rehab my abs. There are certain exercises totally. that you absolutely must avoid. And there are other certain exercises that you absolutely must be performing. So the ones, and, and I have a, another video all about this. I'll leave it in a link in the description down below. Um, basically exercises to avoid are anything that are going to activate that um, rectus abdominis muscle basically perpetuating the problem. You want to avoid your sit-ups, your crunches, your planks, anything where we're doing some forward flexion should be avoided. You're laughing because you're I so guilty. Because that's what we're taught to do to get a mm -hmm. six pack. You've got to be planking. You've got to be doing sit-ups. You've got to be crunching. Right. Right. And so basically the take home message here is, is ab workouts and ab rehab after your pregnancy don't look the same as before. You need to be doing different muscle, different exercises to activate different muscles in different ways in order to see the progress that you're after. All right. So 
here's the next one. Okay. Kind of goes right with that. Right. I'm not seeing much progress since giving birth. I'm probably just not working out hard enough. So exactly, kind of a, a follow up to the question that we just answered. This is this is something that I tell patients and clients all the time. It's not a question of necessarily working out harder. It's just a question of doing things a little bit differently to get you the results mm -hmm. that you're after. And so again, some of these ab ab exercises that we just mentioned with the last question. If you do have a diastasis recti condition, if you have that abdominal separation, they can actually perpetuate that problem. Yeah. As this diastasis recti is one of the main culprits behind that pooch or pouch or tummy, like whatever you guys want to call it, doing those exercises that exacerbate that problem don't do anything to actually cure the problem that you're trying to cure. Yeah. Hope you guys can follow that. And so the sit-ups, the crunches, the planks, the traditional ab work don't do anything to heal the separation. Therefore, you never see progress. Therefore, I think a lot of us in our minds is, I've just got to work out harder. And that's not always yeah. the case. If you're just injuring that area, the idea is, okay, we don't necessarily need you to work out harder. We just need you to work out smarter. Yeah, totally. And I think too, it comes down to like, I just figured high intensity workouts Correct. meant that I would burn more fat, burn more calories, lose the weight faster. Right. But that wasn't necessarily the case. And that's one thing that your program taught me was Absolutely. that it's all about this steady state cardio. Right. And being in the right um, heart rate zone, the right fat burning zone, you've got all this extra fat around your belly from having a baby. You've got to burn that off. Right. So that was another eye opener for me. Right. And so a big part of the program that I developed is the Mommy Tummy Fix program. And a big part of that isn't, you know, it's not all just about core rehab. If you're actually looking to fix your mommy tummy, there is some abdominal fat that's going to be there. I'm sorry. I know that's hard to hear, <laughs> but you probably put on some yeah. weight oh, with your 100%. pregnancy. 50 pounds. Fine. <laughs> She goes big. She goes big and bigger go home. Doesn't, doesn't look bad. <laughs> and so you have to be doing some type of activity that's actually going to burn that fat. Now, your yeah. go-to was yeah. always jump into the highest intensity right. that you could. Go hard. Go hard. hard. Yeah, 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 yeah. You want to, you know, I've got 30 minutes till my kid wakes up. I'm going to push as hard as yeah. I can. As soon as we kind of snapped her out of that and said, okay, fat burns a little bit differently than your higher intensity workouts. You actually don't have to work out that hard. Yeah. You can step that down a little a bit, stay in kind of a fat burning heart rate zone, not get up into that higher intensity heart rate zone and still make progress. Yeah. And oh, so yeah. those are a couple of the things that we tried to incorporate in this program and you made fantastic progress with yeah. it. So as soon as I started doing the right things, right. work smarter, not harder. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Next question. I've had friends get tummy tucks to finally get rid of their pooches yes. after having kids. Is this the only option? Oh, you guys, the tummy tuck. Yep. Yes. Our doctors will talk more to us about a tummy tuck than about doing exercises to heal it naturally. Isn't that fascinating? Yes. Yeah. And it's heartbreaking. Like, it really is. You don't have to have this invasive surgery. Right. And so here's what I always tell people, you guys. So... There, there is some skin stretching that does occur with yes. pregnancy. Yes. And if you have loose skin, then yeah, there's no amount of core exercises that's going to actually tighten your skin. And so I'll definitely, I'll, I'll definitely say that. However, if you're doing the tummy tuck to lose abdominal fat, if it's like the liposuction procedure with the diastasis repair procedure, the thing is you're looking at about six to eight weeks of downtime. So after the tummy tuck, they recommend six weeks of basically no activity. It's six weeks until those incisions and those sutures and everything heal up. If you did opt to have the diastasis repair, so the two halves of the abdomen, they can, they can put that back together as well. That's an additional two weeks. So again, you're looking at six to eight weeks of nothing Being of down. downtime. Yeah. And then at that point, after the tummy tuck procedure, that's when you can actually start to rehab your abs again. So mm -hmm. basically you're, you're starting at square one, six to eight weeks after you've already yeah. had the procedure. And so my argument is give me those six to eight weeks rather than jump right into the tummy tuck. I want those six to eight weeks and I want you to put in work and I want you to do the exercises that I recommend. I want to clean up your eating and I want to recommend the right type yeah. of cardio activity and let's see what kind of progress that we can make rather than starting at square one in six to eight weeks. Let's put in work now and see what it looks like in six to eight weeks. Yeah. And you know what you guys like, 
one of the biggest rewards for me is I'll have moms come in and be like, you know, I just, I just had my consultation with my plastic surgeon. Surgery is set for, you know, four or five weeks from now. And then in three or four weeks, they'll come in and be like, I just canceled my surgery. Like I'm making such good progress. I've lost two inches and I had a four finger abdominal separation. Now it's a two finger abdominal separation. That's the reward you guys. That's like, that's like the coolest part. And so while I do feel, and, and, and granted, there are some instances where, you know, you're, you're just not going to see all the progress that you want with conservative yeah. care. And, and, and I'll get that out of the way, but let's not make that the first option. Let's not make that the very first, like, this is what I'm going to do right out of the gate. Let's see if we can do some natural, some conservative care yeah. and see what kind of progress we can make. So, okay. So let me ask you this as Talk a physical therapist. Here we go. Oh, no. What are the rehab exercises for someone who has a tummy tuck? You know, it's fascinating about that. And you know where I'm going. <laughs> I was gonna Look say, on your face. I guarantee. Yeah. It's these. So it's the exact same exercises that we start with in the Mommy Tummy there Fix you program. You guys, the goal of the Mommy Tummy Fix is to rehab your abs. Most of the time, for most of the, the people out there who get this, it's rehabbing your abs after pregnancy. However, if you have that tummy tuck procedure, you have to rehab your abs. And yeah. we start at square one, just like we start at square one in this program. And so you can do it now and see what kind of progress you can make. Yeah. Or you can even do these after your tummy tuck surgery and see how they do from there. So there you go. Yeah. Regardless, yeah. these I, are going to be the exercises. I, you can may, Maybe it's <laughs> obvious which direction I tend to lean. I hope so. Okay. So this was one of my questions that I had. Talk to me. All right. If I do core exercises every day, yep. I'll get rid of this mom pooch. Ooh, that's a good one, you guys. It's yeah, and you know what? This is this is just like the the culture that we live in. This is yeah. the society that we live in of oh, I've got I've got extra weight around my abdomen. I need to do sit-ups and crunches, and that's what's going to get yeah, rid spot of treat. this extra weight. Yep, you're exactly right. And you hit it right on the head, you guys. It's impossible to spot treat, treat fat, meaning I can't just do an exercise or an activity and lose weight in my stomach. That's just that's not how it works. <laughs> and so if you're if you're trying to lose your mom pooch or mom pouch, what you need to do is kind of take a step outside of that and say, okay, yeah, I've probably got an extra 10 or 15 pounds in my stomach. But if you look outside of that, you realize, okay, I probably have an extra 20 pounds to lose overall. You might carry it differently, and women tend to carry it more yeah. kind of in their hips and in their butt and like in their triceps. However, after pregnancy, again, kind of step outside yourself and say, okay. I could probably stand to lose not just fat right here, but fat everywhere. You guys, pregnancy, like you're going to gain weight. Like it happens. And like, you're yeah. not just going to reserve it right here in your stomach. And so that being said, when I designed the Mommy Tummy Fix program, my goal was to make it as comprehensive a program as possible. In order to actually fix that Mommy Tummy, you can't spot treat fat. You can't just do that core work and expect miracles to happen in that spot. You have to kind of step outside of that and realize, okay, I need to do something different with my activity. I need to work out a little more regularly. I need to move a little bit more regularly. I need to stay in this heartburn or heartburn, fat burn, We're getting heart heartburn zone. Heartburn yeah. After yeah. Pregnancy. pregnancy, right? <laughs> Tums like smarties. Oh, you're, yes. you're getting, you're getting over, or you're, you need to, you need to stay in the fat burn heart rate zone. So yeah. activity is one big thing but then also eating you guys you yeah. can never outwork a bad diet you can try really you hard can try and i did <laughs> but it just comes down to like food is fuel and you've got to put good fuel in your body right. and it means cutting out sugar cutting out soda all those things that we turn to because we think we need that even diet soda like right it's not helping us it's making us fat right so there you go and so, and so that was the goal. And so with the mommy tummy fix, you not only get the core, core workouts, core exercises, but there's also cardio to help you to increase your activity the right way. And then also some eating guides and eating advice and menu plans and, and things of that nature. And so, so that's the approach that you need to take. Um, I, and again, I'm telling you what's available with me and with my program. It doesn't necessarily have to be that way. Just keep in mind that if you want to see those results, you need to, do the right core work. You need to eat the right things and you need to get a little bit more activity. You can't just do your core work to see results. It needs yeah. to be more of a total body approach. 
All right, so hey, thanks so much for joining us, you guys. That was a lot of fun to kind of brainstorm with you, brainstorm especially with my wife. Thank you. Thanks for yeah. hanging out with me. You're welcome. This, is, this was fun. And so you guys, I hope that helped you guys out. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those down below. I'll get to those as soon as I can. Um, if you haven't done so already, I'd love if you subscribe to Tone and Titan here on YouTube. You can do that. There's a little red subscribe button right down there. Be sure to hit that. All right, you guys, thanks so much for joining us. If you want to subscribe to the channel, right down below. If you have more questions about diastasis recti, hit that one right over there. If you have more questions or want to learn more about postpartum fitness, that one right down there is the one that you're going to click on. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you. We'll see you again. I don't know what I'm doing.